Okay. Welcome to Growth and Inspire, where we examine topics that make us feel inspired and grow. I'm your host, Bonnie Yam. We will be posting frequently on topics to help you run your business better. It can be issues involving new regulations, taxes, planning for business growth, or how to run your business more efficiently. Join us on this journey as we will have lots of interesting guests such as business evaluator, insurance experts, M&A experts, and don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review if you enjoy what you hear. And today, our topic is on business evaluation. Our speaker is Scott Gabehart, a valuation pro expert with over 30 years of experience, also Chief Valuation Officer of Biz Equity. Hello, Scott. Hey, how are you, Bonnie? Great. Yeah. So happy to have you on our podcast. Before we start, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your company? Sure. Uh, well, I've been with Biz Equity from the very beginnings, which actually goes back as far as 2006. And I essentially uh, have been responsible for developing the algorithm, which drives the valuation analysis and reports. Um, but outside of Biz Equity, uh, I have been a business broker, middle market specialist. Uh, I've uh, uh, actually worked for two multinational corporations as an internal auditor, traveled the world, worked wow. in Switzerland, uh, yeah, Malaysia, wonderful. a lot wonderful. of places. Yeah. But mostly, I've spent the last 30 years in the middle between buyers and sellers looking to buy or sell companies for one reason or another. So you've seen it all. <laughs> I, I've seen a lot. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Yeah, so um, Scott, um, do you, what, can you tell me a little bit about like why you think business evaluation is important? Well, uh, you could uh, look at it as uh, a, a scorecard. It's, it's a measure of where you are as a business owner or owners with respect to uh, the value of your company, which in most cases for the primary owner uh, represents the single largest asset of their yeah. portfolio. That's and yeah. as a result, they, they should treat that uh, asset um, carefully and be aware of what drives valuation and what can be done to enhance value. Um, and, you know, uh, 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 among the many elements of business valuation, there's something called the size effect. Mm -hmm. And this is really important for business owners to understand because it should be a motivator. Uh, as you increase the magnitude of your revenues and cash flows available to the owner, the multiples rise. Mm -hmm. So you you it's a double a double bonus. Yeah. You not not only are the earnings bigger, but <laughs> the multiples are higher. Yeah. And, that's uh, a nice they can be significantly it. higher between a hundred thousand in discretionary earnings and a million. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, I mean there's a lot of reason to it too, you know. Um you're bigger, so you're more reliable. Um, you know, everything's more established, so less risk. Exactly. Yeah. That's right? what the 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 risk the risk comes down. All other things equal, the larger mm -hmm. an enterprise is. Sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that too. Um, so, what are the key factors that affect the value of a company? What do you think? Uh, what, what yeah, well, that's a that's a, a open ended question that we could talk about for hours, <laughs> but. Uh, I think the one thing that I would want to stress is that there is no such thing as the value of a company. Uh, the, the, the value is a function of why you're doing the valuation, uh, the point in time. True. And the reality is that if you hired five appraisers, gave them <laughs> the identical facts, you're going to get five different estimates. And within a range of something like 1.75 million to 2.25 million. So they're, 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 it's an art as much as a science. Right. It's based on facts and generally accepted valuation principles, but mm -hmm. every valuation report ultimately is an opinion. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, there are literally layers of assumptions that are made to reach that final estimate of value. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the, the big picture perspective. And it also depends on what are you, what are you valuing? Uh, when you go to sell your company, you can do either an asset sale or an equity sale. That's true. And the value of an asset sale will differ from the value of a stock sale. Yeah. Um, and um, so uh, there's much to the question of what what is it that drives uh, business value, but in the most general sense. Um, I, I would go with size, profitability, and growth. Mm -hmm. The bigger, mm -hmm. the higher the multiple. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Size, Start profitability, there. and growth. <laughs> Start there. Yeah. Yeah. We and should... in fact, that's that's led to something in our profession that we're referring to as the quality premium. Mm -hmm. And it's been bolstered by the massive influx of private equity uh, in the lower to upper end of the middle market, uh, whereby they, they in effect are paying substantial premiums for the best companies, the ones with the highest profit margin and the highest growth. Well, uh, so profitability, yeah. growth, and actually, we, you basically point to the same factor. I'm hearing it like, you know, risk, you know, how do you value risk? So if it's premium company with good employees, everything is in right order, the risk is lower. So exactly, I that's right. A bit of a premium, where it's like, okay, cheap, 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 but I don't know what I'm buying. So if you're that's just right. premium, that might even be a company. So yeah, so sure, sure. Yes. Interesting. That, yeah. That, that's exactly right. Yeah. So what about some mistakes uh, do you see since you have so so many years of experience uh, can you talk a little bit about the uh, mistakes business owners make during sure. it yeah sure well i i think clearly the biggest mistake is that they do nothing <laughs> to plan for their exit <laughs> they wish you know, the, the, the statistics vary but as many as much as 75 80% of business owners have not really formally adopted any type of uh, exit uh, retirement yeah. Yeah. plan. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and uh, avoiding that conversation uh, can and will become a problem when a certain life event happens in the future yeah. that you yeah. weren't really planned for. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember a few years back, you know, around Christmas time, I, I received invitation. I thought, whoa, okay, so let's go. And then say, our store is closing down. I said, well, this is a very established company. And then, no, no, you know, we're going to sell all the, the it's a, a eyeglass store. So you just say, you know, whatever you want, you just get a very low price. And then that's it, you know, after the, the, the new year, we'll be gone. And I, I looked around, well, what about the employees, okay? Yeah. They might have made enough money at, for retirement, but what about what about the people that work for you for all these That's years? right. That's right. Yeah. So And, and there's and there's, all, there's so many ways to prepare for that, um, uh, to avoid a situation where a business has to sh shut down. Right, so. And that, that clearly is the biggest mistake uh you know, in a big picture yeah uh, that's yeah. yeah terrible um so are there any other mistakes that you you can think of um well i think uh you're you're probably aware of a, a recent uh court ruling uh the uh con con so-called connolly case yeah where this particular business owner made two big mistakes. So the first big mistake was they didn't follow their buy sell agreement to obtain a valuation. They they ha they had two options per the buy sell agreement to uh, agree on a certificate of agreed value uh, or hiring two different appraisers and using that That's figure. <laughs> All they did was basically pick a number out of thin air and wow. use that. And the IRS audited and struck the uh, that portion of their agreement down because they didn't follow the buy sell agreement. It wasn't a uh, it wasn't consistent with Section 2703 of the Internal Revenue Code. But the bigger uh, problem that they had was that the court ruled that in the case of a redemption agreement, 
where the company is paying for uh, the insurance on, in this case, each of the two owners, that value is considered to be part of the estate. Mm. And that increased their tax bill by about a million dollars. And and it could have been avoided by way of uh, a cross purchase agreement uh, where the individual owners yes. uh, fund the insurance. Yeah. And, and then they could have saved uh, that million dollars. And there are other creative ways that uh, you're aware of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about that later. And not only that, I mean, you know, like when, when the value goes up, and but it's not real value, okay? The company did not increase any value. It's just the insurance policy that you use to pay to buy out the other partner. So all of a sudden you have a couple million dollars that comes from nowhere, but that you have to distribute to to somebody who passed away. So it's where you can come up with the cash flow. I think two issues. Yeah. One, missing cash flow. One to IRS. And the other one is it's like... The person who passed away, the the the, the family. I yeah. don't know how they're going to resolve it. This is going to be pretty pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, Can you imagine people fighting <laughs> money that doesn't even exist? <laughs> yeah, I can. That kind of reminds me of uh, paying capital gains on profits that don't exist. They, they exactly. Unrealized capital that's gains. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, that's scary. Yeah, you know, actually, the planning is not that simple because there are lots, a lot of things involved like you know the, the the owner that's one the family is another and what are all the employees that were just like mentioning come on you know you made a lot of these money you know it goes to your pocket because you're the owner but i need that livelihood to pay my bills i've been working for you for all these years and then all that's right yeah. that's right that's also another shock you know and then and then the other thing i i, I find it scary is that it's not one person. Whenever one person is like the whole family is involved. So let's say daddy didn't get it work anymore. And yeah. then you can pay the bills. The whole family is affected. <laughs> so that's right. That's right. <sighs> yep. So uh planning. Sure. Proper planning. Pro, pro preemptive, yeah. proactive time. planning yeah. is, time. is the key. Yeah. Review your buy sell agreements, uh consider yeah. cross purchase agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, consult your advisors and uh, uh, document everything so that if the IRS does get involved, you're you're ready to go to battle. And then in the evaluation, pretty sure you have a lot to talk about because I've seen evaluations like makes no sense. And I'm not talking about the final value, the the the, the input stuff. Come on, you look at it, it's like up and down every year is different. You know, you're running a business to see what's going on. You try to save taxes, I understand. But, you know, when I'm a buyer, I, I, I don't feel comfortable about your company. So OK, I, well, that yeah. So that that reminds me uh, of my time as a business broker helping sellers and that, you know, it was not uncommon and I'm sure it's still very common that business owners would either uh, keep cash. Yes. Or uh, <laughs> uh, in, include personal expenses, et cetera, et cetera. And then the buyers come along and they think, hmm, well, if they're lying about that, what else are they lying about? So it, it actually goes to their credibility. Uh, and you, you generally speaking, you can't have your cake and eat it too. too. No. <laughs> and, and back to the thing about you, about top of planning. You, you know, you can't have one good year. I don't trust it. You know, if you do the planning, you want to show me the tax returns or whatever, you better have more than one year, right? That's right. So you have to start now because if you want to sell in three or five years, you better start now because you have nothing to show me. <laughs> That's right. And and the cleaner the profits are, yeah. uh, the better. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I think this is great. Um, I think uh, I, I learned quite a lot. I think it's, I understand it's complex, but I think the number one thing I learned is like start now, <laughs> start early. That's right. And then uh, find especially something especially now when we're we're on the brink of uh the estate tax threshold being cut in half That's if right. if there's no uh, uh legislation and of course that will depend on the election we don't know yet. Uh, and and if by chance one side wins uh there's going to be presumably a number of tax changes 
uh, again, depending on how the Congress, uh, the House and the Senate uh, yep. fall out. Yep. But right. but it's a yep. it's it's a very different scenario on one side yep. versus the other, and in particular within the context of our discussion, uh, cutting that uh, estate tax threshold in half is going to bring literally thousands of business owners into a potential 40% tax bracket, yep. which is uh, not going to be fun. It's going to be millions and millions of dollars. So stop yeah. that now. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And then plan it with somebody who actually knows this stuff. Don't think that you know it all because like, you know, your Connolly case, when they start auditing it and then they realize that whatever you have is, come on, we don't accept it. Then you don't have anything. <laughs> so, that's right. Yeah. So it's important. Do it right. Do it early. And then be safe. You know, that's most important. You, you work so hard for your, for your, your company, you know, and then this is your retirement. So make sure right. that you do it right. Yeah. Make yeah. Sure, yeah. To just wing it. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so how, how do you, uh, as uh, a value builder, oh. <laughs> look, at, look at value and uh, at what kind of advice are you uh, propagating right. in that sense? Yeah, I, you know, I I I worked at a business evaluator as a business evaluator for like oh, 10 years. And I've seen, you know, all these like little things that we talk about and joke about. And then also because of that, and I think it's a pretty important like, to start early. And um, uh, there's a software called Value Builder software and, and I'm a certified value builder. But it, it, it a lot of things probably will hit home. You know it, but you have to implement it. And what yeah. I really like about it, it it's very it, it, it's easy they, they explain it in a very simple, easy, understandable way. It's very easy to make it too complicated. So anyway, number one is financial yeah. performance. We all know. Okay, make sure you had good books, right? Number yeah. two, growth potential. Are you in a business that has good growth or Mm -mm. It's again going down, going up. So that's important. If I'm a buyer, of course, I want it to be on the upside. Not like you take all the upside and know it's about to, to, to drop, then you sell it to me. I'm not so happy, right? Yeah. And then owner's independence is very important. Like when you, when, you, when you buy somebody's business, after they leave, the business has to be able to function and continue on without you. Otherwise, yeah. why buying? You know, you the business. <laughs> so when you're gone, I don't have anything. That's so right. Has, you, whoever... Uh, stay behind your your employees key employees has to be able to to manage the company without you so you need to think about ways to have a standard operating procedures you know like just like when you hire a new person there's a little record book on how how do you do xyz and yeah. so that can be repeated so even if you're not there somebody can step in your position you can like go to switzerland for another week or two weeks and the company will not close down because you're not there so that's very yeah. very important yeah. Um. And then there's like you know, is the business a uh, cash suck or cash spigot? It's producing money or sucking in money. Yeah. You know, of yeah. course. But to if I buy buy the business from you, I want to be able to use the business some of the cash flow to fund for the for the for the business. So yeah. I don't want to have another set of cash flow. And recurring ca re revenue is also very important because like the, the, that means it's stable, low risk yeah. recurring revenue. And you 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 don't want it to be dependent on one supplier, one one customer. <laughs> That's not good. That yeah. if you lose that, you it's your business, you know, big trouble. Customer satisfaction, of course, and then owner independence. That's me. Those are the eight okay. drivers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then and then the the valuable software has a very interesting um, assessment tool, and uh, you know we ask the, the questions. And they will give you a score and they give you a value gap. Of course, it's not like this equity of actually gets your real value, but approximate enough to show you yeah. where you are on the map. And yeah. it will show. And then there's also a scenario study. You can like do the slider. So I fix this gap. Ooh, I got another $500,000. If I fix yeah. this gap, $200,000. So you, decide so we, you can fix. actually visualize the size effect too. That's right. Yeah. You decide what, it, it, but, but it's not going to be simple. If I want to build customer, I want to diversify. It's not one day, two days work. It's going to take it's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 But at least that you know what, what, what's going to get, get you the most mileage. So you decide yeah. you want to work first. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I think it's cool. You know, I, 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 maybe you can't do all eight. You don't have the time, but pick the ones that makes the most difference first. Work on those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all in the same vein of uh, planning. Just 
get right. start planning now so start right. yeah building yeah. value now yeah uh, instead of uh waiting until out. when you have no time and too late <laughs> yeah that's right that's exactly right yeah what, what's great about this is because until people see the numbers they're not motivated but when they tell them to do something, why should I? I wait till tomorrow. I wait till tomorrow. But when they see, when they see this is this is like five hundred thousand dollars, or this is a million dollars. Mm, okay, I invest a little bit more money, more yeah. time to get it done right. Just so, visualization is important. Uh, that, like you have to give them a little value. You know, what am I getting? Okay, if I do this, you close the gap. How much is that worth? Yeah. Ah, okay. Then they then they're motivated. Yeah, if you just tell them to do something they're not interested. I'm so busy, which is true. <laughs> they do everything. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 And I really like your your software, this equity. You want to talk a little bit about it? Sure. It's um uh, uh been developed uh, you know over now 18 years, and uh we uh improve it in various ways as time goes by. Uh, one of our most recent additions uh, is the capability of valuing a, a minority interest. Oh, really? And what that what that means is that a the value of a ten percent interest is not equal to ten percent of the control value. Yes. There are discounts. Yes. And particularly in the estate and gift tax realm. A 10% interest would be subject to a discount for lack of control mm -hmm. and a discount for lack of marketability. Uh -huh. And our software uh, now uh, wow, uh, that's handles great. Wonderful. those situations. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we have another uh, 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 tool that will be forthcoming by the end of this year. Uh -huh. And uh, that will allow users to request and pay for the actual summary transaction data for that five digit NICAS code. So in addition to learning more about what multiples of biz equity uses and produces, you can get access to the actual transaction data from the, the leading transaction data provider in 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 the world you could say for private companies uh and it's called deal stats mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But through uh, business valuation resources um so those are both important tools but essentially the biz equity seven step process is mimicking all of the same data and inputs that i would make as an appraiser mm -hmm. and um that that was the goal from the beginning to just make it as realistic as possible in mimicking what is actually done by certified appraisers. Uh, it's not quite as advanced in in terms of discounted cash flow analysis, but that's on our roadmap for next year for those wow, who, you're gonna who add want that to too? use that that tool. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Great to know. Because I, I, I think like, you know, you you have the market data, which is great. Otherwise, you have to buy lots of all kinds of data. And then you do a lot of like little research and pull this, pull that. And then it's all in one place I really like. And then yeah. with this equity is very easy because it asks some key questions. And then that's right. The and, the back, and the report is really nice. <laughs> very yeah. nice. Yep. I really nice like presentation, it. 29 pages, yep. four, four different types of value, asset sale value, equity value, enterprise value, and liquidation value. Okay. So that, that goes to my earlier point that there is no such thing as the value of a business. Mm -hmm. Depends on what you're valuing, among That's other right. things. Yeah. So uh, anybody... And then there are KPIs as well. 13. That's right. Uh, That's right. Yeah. So you, you can tell like, you know, how my, how am I doing? You know, it calculates that for you. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. I really like your software. So if anybody's interested um, in this equity, I, I would be able to assist. I can give you like a free link. You can download and then get a free estimate of like a rough approximate of your, your, your company's value. Nice. Yeah. So I that's would... a good deal because I can tell you that uh, some, uh, uh, advisors are charging a lot of money for the biz equity report. Well, I mean, it, it depends on what level. If it's a simple level, you should be able to give it, you know. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's a, it's a marketing tool. I mean, 
you, oh. yeah, you're, you're, it, you're, it, by you giving it away free, there's a cost to you to do that, but you're also generating goodwill. A lot of it does, yeah, and, I mean, you not just, yeah, the, yeah, and it, this is just like first step. <laughs> you know, that's right. Lot, that's lot right. to it. They're going to ask somebody, you, why is it so low? <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> and then you have another good discussion after that. That's that's the value builder. Yeah, so actually, you know, so I, I think you know you can tell um, Scott is very very knowledgeable because every time when you ask him one question, he really knows. He knows how to dive deep and tell you every everything background for <laughs> more than you want to know. Yes, no, but <laughs> but you know value, but 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 it just shows you the complexity um, and why it's most 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 important is you need to understand it takes time. If you want to exit, it takes two to three years, okay? Because just to do the value and then make it look good, it's going to take some time. And people are not going to believe it's just got one good year, okay? So you need some history. So yeah. there you go, okay? And then That's if right. you find a value gap, then you have to give yourself a little bit of time to clean that up as well. So when you sell, also, you know, it's not just about the value. When I look at the numbers, everything look good and clean and all that. I mean, if the two two companies side by side, which one would I pick? I pick one that has a... Nice you, you, you're help. You're helping to improve the appeal of a company when they are for sale. Exactly. Just like when you buy a house, when you walk in the house, oh, everything is nice and clean. I don't see any garbage on the floor. It's beautiful. I like the color. I like that's, the curtain. All right, that's sign. Exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's really it. And I I think you know Scott has a lot to add, but you know I I know his time is very very valuable. Um, and he also had some other slides that we I can share later on, um, on, on, you know, a more deep dive on business valuation. And uh, this equity, if anybody was interested in just getting a quick rough value, let me know and I can assist. And if you have any questions, of course, you can um, contact us. Uh, and I, I, I want to say thank you to, to Scott for, for wonderful sharing today. And I wish everybody a wonderful rest of the day. And don't forget to follow us on social media. And join us on our next podcast. It's going to be uh, long-term care, <laughs> retirement income planning. Um, and it's something we all want to know more about, particularly um, Scott mentioned uh, about the Connolly, the um, estate planning, the, the big blow up on buy-sell agreement. That's very important. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So let's keep learning. And uh, until next time, stay inspired. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.